the cold of space settled into my bones like a permanent guest. Even inside the insulated hull of the Starship Explorer, it seemed to seep in. I stared at the flickering readout of oxygen levels, the hum of the ion engines, a lullaby against the gnawing silence that filled the rest of the ship. Sergeant Rogers, status report. Captain Rivera's voice, raspy and tinny through the comm system, pulled me from my half daze. O2 holding at 72%, propulsion nominal. All systems showing green, Captain, I responded. The exact exchange is repeated every few hours. Routine was the key to staying alive out here in the void of space. A blip appeared on the long-range scanner, a speck against the backdrop of stars. The routine was now broken. Picking up an unidentified object, Captain. Looks large. Like a ship. Dead ships weren't unheard of. Relics of some old interstellar conflict or vessels lost to the insatiable void. Usually they were picked clean by scavengers. But something about this one, the way it seemed to sit just adrift without the usual telltale signs of damage, set off alarm bells somewhere deep in my gut. Bring us in closer, Mark. Let's have a look. The explorer edged towards it, a predator circling wounded prey. As we drew closer, the ship came into view, a hulk of twisted metal and charred paneling. Then I saw a logo, faded but unmistakable, the golden arches of McDonald's. A laugh bubbled up in my throat, tinged with hysterical disbelief. A McDonald's, out here in the middle of nowhere. It was too insane, a fever dream of isolation. Captain, you seeing this? I am, Mark. I honestly don't know what to make of it. Rivera's voice had lost its usual edge of command and was replaced by bewilderment. Requesting permission to investigate, Captain, I said unable to quell the thrill of the unknown that was starting to outpace my earlier unease. Deep down, the absurdity of the situation fueled my curiosity. Permission granted, but proceed with extreme caution. Adams, gear up. You're going with him. Our stoic resident engineer Adams acknowledged the order, her voice a steady monotone. I couldn't help but feel envy. She always seemed immune to the strange fears that haunted me in deep space. The airlock hissed open, revealing the derelict ship looming just a short distance away. Floating across the void, tethered to the explorer, something shifted within me. A cold dread replacing the earlier curiosity. The ship was more than silent. It radiated a sense of wrongness. Mark, look, those arches... Adams' voice betrayed a sliver of her usual composure. They're... they're red, not yellow. I looked again. She was right. The blood-red arches hung off kilter against the metal hull, like a garish parody of the familiar fast food joint. My pulse quickened. We docked with the derelict ship. The airlock on their side wind open, the interior spilling forth a sickly, artificial light that did nothing to chase away the shadows clinging to every angle of the corridor beyond. All right, team. Move slowly. Stay alert. Rivera's voice cracked in our helmets. It sounded further away than it should have. Adams took the lead, a hefty laser cutter in her hands. I followed, my nerves jangling with each step. The inside of the ship was surreal, to say the least. Rotting fry cartons spilled from bins. Half-melted plastic toys peeked out from under greasy counters. The stench of decay was almost overwhelming, a thick sweetness hanging in my helmet filters. Captain, you getting these readings? I asked. Oxygen was registering, but just barely. The atmosphere here was tainted, foul. I am, Mark. Be careful. His voice now had an undercurrent of tension mirroring my own. The deeper we ventured, the more unsettling the environment became. The walls seemed to sweat a sticky, translucent ooze. Slogans plastered on the walls shifted in and out of focus. Twisted versions of the familiar McDonald's promotions. McDonald's. I'm dreading it. 
Come as you are, and stay, forever. An unhappy meal to feed your nightmares. As I stepped further into the ship's decaying belly, a sour tang assaulted my nostrils. Obviously, this isn't an ordinary McDonald's, Adams, I whispered into the comm, voice muffled by my helmet. Something changed it. There could be some localized bacteria in this strange environment. Adams replied, her usual coolness laced with a hint of unease as she cautiously looked around. Let's take some more readings. Maybe we'll find the source. The restaurant area stretched ahead of us. Tables and booths warped like half-melted plastic, the air heavy with a greasy sweetness. Each step on the sticky floor echoed in the unnatural hush. Suddenly, a blur of motion zipped across a doorway. Adams and I whirled towards it, weapons raised. Nothing. Eyes must be playing tricks. Adams muttered, but her grip on the laser cutter tightened. Each shadow seemed to lengthen, the greasy walls closing in. The slogans grew more macabre. You'll never leave. We'll have you for dinner. They leered from every surface. Mark, look, over there! Adams pointed a shaky finger. A happy meal box sat on a nearby table, its crimson cardboard seeming to pulse in the half-light. As we edged closer, I felt a tremor run through the floor. The air crackled with a tension that set my teeth on edge. As I was close enough to see it finally, I muttered the words into my comms, confused. Un... happy meal. What is this? My words raised the room's tension from 10 to a solid 11. Before Adams could reply, something slammed into the table, shattering it. The unhappy meal box clattered to the ground, bursting open to reveal not brightly colored toys, but a writhing mess of insects. Scuttling beetle-like things with too many legs and gnashing mandibles. What the hell? I recoiled facing Adams back to back as the swarm burst forth, their chittering like a thousand tiny, terrifying voices. Adams fired the laser cutter, a burning line carving through the swarm, incinerating insects with a hiss of acrid smoke. Still, they kept coming. A sudden skittering near my boot sent me leaping back, barely avoiding the slashing bite of one of those freakishly long legs. Run! Captain Rivera's ordinarily calm voice had picked up an edge of panic. But too late. The swarm enveloped us. I fired wildly, the smell of burning insects mingling with the rotten stench. Every swipe and kick sent clusters of the creatures spinning. Still, they were unending, crawling over each other, their tiny eyes gleaming with insatiable hunger. Sarah! Get out! That's an order! My voice turned into a desperate shout over the comms. Suddenly, silence. The swarm had moved on, drawn by some unseen pull towards the back of the eatery. Adams was slumped against a wall, breathing heavily but alive. Relief washed over me, then turned to a fresh wave of panic. The swarm couldn't have just... vanished. An icy chill ran down my spine. We weren't alone. Something was watching. I saw a flicker of movement in the corner of my eye. As I spun to face it, a shape slithered back into the shadows. Come on, let's get out of here. Now, I urged, practically dragging Adams by her arm. Again, a shadow in the distance caught my attention. Its loping gait carried it horrifyingly across the floor. It screeched as we fled and I heard Adams cry out behind me. I didn't bother to look back. Mark! Sarah! Report! Captain Rivera's voice boomed through the helmet speaker, laced with an urgency I'd never heard before. Captain, something's in here with us! My words tumbled out, panicked, as I ran as fast as my suit allowed. Something's not right! I yelled. Sarah, can you hear me? Respond! I bellowed realizing that she wasn't at my heels anymore. Static. Only static. My breath quickened into ragged gasps. Mark, get out! Get out now! 
The captain's command sliced through my fear. No, I couldn't just leave Sarah, could I? My thoughts came frantic and unfiltered. I slowed my pace to turn around and that was the moment I saw it standing in the hallway I had just run down. It was towering, its sickly pale skin stretched tightly over a skeletal frame. My mouth fell open as I realized what it was, my eyes filling with tears at the sight of it. Its head was an enormous hamburger, grease dripping between congealed patties, lettuce and pickles hanging out like rotting, distorted facial features. It opened its bun mouth and let out a keening wail. Part shriek, part moan, part... laughter. Behind me, a soft yet wicked voice whispered, Would you like fries with that? I didn't wait to find out where the voice came from. Panic fueled my legs, carrying me frantically toward an adjacent hallway leading to the open airlock. I could hear the creature, the burger thing, thudding behind me, the rancid smell of it filling my lungs. I burst through the airlock, the closing hiss cutting off the burger thing's hideous cries. Hands shaking, I fumbled for the release button, slamming it desperately. The explorer drifted away as the docking clamps disengaged. Through the viewport, I could see the derelict McDonald's ship, those crimson arches glowing faintly like malevolent eyes. Mark, Mark, are you there? Respond! Rivera's voice was frantic. Struggling against the shock washing over me, I managed a garbled reply. Captain, it got Sarah. She's gone. I think it ate her. There's a thing. A monster. Please, we have to get out of here. A long, terrible silence stretched over the calm line. Mark, I know. I saw it. I saw what happened to Sarah through her comms link. I'm sorry. Mark, we're leaving right now. I'm so sorry. His voice broke thick with unshed tears and the guilt of command. I watched through glazed eyes as the explorer pivoted, the thrusters flaring to life. The derelict ship shrank in the distance, a malignant blot against the stars, finally swallowed by the vastness of space. Floating in the silence that followed, all I could hear was the thumping of my heart and the mysterious taunt echoing through the void. Would you like fries with that? Back on board the Explorer, even the sterile, familiar environments of the ship couldn't erase the lingering horror. As time passed, the golden arches of every McDonald's I saw on Earth became a twisted beacon, a reminder of the grotesque parody that haunted a forgotten corner of the cosmos. I learned that some things are better left unremembered and untouched. That's the thing about the dark edges of space. Sometimes the most terrifying discoveries aren't new worlds or alien life forms, but warped reflections of the things we left behind. Many months passed, filled with restless sleep, a lot of weeping, and jumpy nerves whenever anyone mentioned fast food. I remained a broken husk over Sarah's death. The official report listed her as KIA on a routine scouting mission, an easier lie to swallow than the truth. I tried to bury the memory of the derelict McDonald's under a mountain of daily routines. Still, the stink of it clung to me, a persistent phantom odor of grease and despair. Eventually, I found a convincing reason to go on missions again with Captain Rivera, who barely fared better. We searched the stars for something that seemed to call out to us, a tinge of darkness that would not leave us be. Then, years later, it happened. Second contact. Captain, an unidentified ship is approaching. The urgency in the crewman's voice mirrored my own sudden dread. It couldn't be. It couldn't. But it was. As the ship resolved itself on the viewscreen, my stomach lurched. Gleaming metal and those damn arches, this time a nauseating shade of neon green. The air hung thick in the command center. No one dared to voice our shared fear. Mark, Rivera's voice was strained. Are you ready? I was the survivor, the only one who'd seen the inside and lived. And deep down, a twisted sliver of me wanted, needed, to come back. Yes, Captain, I'm ready. 
How about you? Are you ready for this? I fired back. Damn right, the captain responded, anger lacing his words. Lieutenant, the captain spoke. You have the ship. Sergeant Rogers and I are going hunting. Suited up, we made our way into the monstrous parody of a familiar food chain. The air inside was fresher than the first ships, but something in me recoiled from the false normalcy. There were no bodies this time, no putrid fries, just gleaming, empty counters, and pristine fry baskets. Moving deeper into the ship, I stumbled into a room bathed in lurid red light. In the center of it, a grotesque machine throbbed. It was a monstrous amalgamation of conveyor belts, bubbling vats, and mechanical claws. A twisted factory line built for some perverse purpose. And then I saw them. The burgers. Row upon row of perfectly browned patties, neatly stacked on trays. As I got closer, I realized they weren't burger patties at all. They were faces. Human faces contorted in silent screams. Their skin stretched and browned like the most grotesque of patties. A pile lay discarded beneath the main conveyor, some half-formed, others all too recognizable. A scream tore its way from my throat as I recognized Sarah's face in the ghastly stack. The machine gurgled to life. Lights flickered on, conveyor belts began their ominous crawl, and the room pulsed with malevolent energy. That's when I saw a figure rising from one of the oily vats. It was an abomination made from discarded, congealed grease, its shape vaguely humanoid with crude appendages that dripped and reformed. Its head, though, was unmistakable, a giant, grotesque cheeseburger with eyes that burned with a hungry, predatory light. Welcome back. Fresh meat, it hissed, the voice echoing in the chamber like a thousand nails clawing at metal. We were expecting you. Good, I responded, my hand gesturing to the shadows as a rifle-wielding Captain Rivera, flanked by a squad of heavily armed marines, stepped out from concealment. I raised my rifle, a wicked smile spreading across my face. Cause Sarah has been waiting far too long for us to avenge her. Hey, space travelers. Thanks for blasting off with rocket ship radio. We hope you enjoyed this twisted journey into one of America's favorite fast food joints. If you're ready to dive deeper into the rabbit hole of our amazing sci-fi stories, click the next video that pops up and prepare yourself for another adventure. If you want to help us out, please hit the like button, subscribe, and activate that notification bell so you never miss an interstellar transmission. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Tell us what kind of sci-fi tales you want to explore in the future. And as always, safe travels, adventurer.